I just, I, I just want to squeeze her little paws. She's so cute. Look at that little nose. Oh no, I have been spotted. Oh hi, baby. You know she be girl. You know she be baby. Oh. Ho, ho. I just, I'm just, I'm gonna. Oh. No. Have I been rejected? Are you rejecting me? Why are you sticking your little head through the bars? Were you your baby girl? Yeah. Were you gorgeous little baby? Is it? Oh, little baby girl. Hi, hello and welcome, or welcome back, I suppose. Today, we'll be taking a look at a book that I'm legitimately surprised I haven't come across sooner, especially during my degree, although I suppose I didn't take the module in surveillance literature. Falling around the same time as Brave New World in 1984, Karen Boyer's Calicane is a dystopian novel looking at the surveillance state and the extremes they're willing to go to to maintain control. Now, I'll be honest, the dystopian media I've consumed has usually, one, been on TV or film, two, been generally more about technology dystopia, if that makes sense. Think Black Mirror or even Neuromancer. I'm a little bit more interested in technology and things like that, but I do find this stuff still interesting. Also, to really out myself here, I've never actually read 1984. It's on my shelf, it's in the Tubi Red box. I've always meant to read it. I just never have. At least I'm not the type to say I have when I haven't. People do that all of the time and I don't really understand it. it doesn't make you appear any more intelligent if you pretend to read books that you haven't because then you can't actually have an intelligent discussion about it. People do that with Infinite Jest as well although I actually have read that. It took me about two months and it was exhausting. Look, anyway, the point of me bringing up that I haven't read a lot of dystopian fiction especially from this era is that I don't have a comparison point. I'm not about to start going, this is so Orwellian. Look, let's just, let's go on with it, shall we? <laughs> so, I will admit that for the first, maybe 30 or so pages, I wasn't exactly getting along with this book. That's not to do with the content, but more the way it was written. There's a certain formality to it that isn't super easy to place. It could be... A, simply a style choice, B, the age of the book, it is a little over 80 years old, C, a result of translation, or D, a mix of some or all of the above. Whatever the reason, I just wasn't gelling for a while, unable to find my rhythm. It basically meant that I was just reading one word, one word, one word. Oh, but Autumn, that's just how reading works. Yes, thank you for that. But when you read a sentence, you take it in as a whole thing to understand. You can't get a rhythm with reading if you feel like a child trying to sound out your words for the first time. I wasn't reading, you know, let me go back in my script. I wasn't just reading... Whatever the reason, I just wasn't gelling for a while, unable to find my rhythm. It was more like whatever the reason I just... It was so stilted like that. Something to do with the formality, I just wasn't clicking with it. And what that meant was that I kept having to go back and read things over a few times until it stuck. But eventually, I did slowly find my way, and once I did, I was really able to dive in and enjoy this book. So, kind of early on, I 
think still around the point that I was talking about when I was struggling to read, maybe a little bit after that, there's a conversation going on with Cal and one of his superiors, and at some point, one of them mentions that he's not yet in his 40s. Now, Cal seems like a pretty established scientist, and just carries himself like someone much older. This isn't a bad or good thing, just something that took me out of it for a second. I also think this might be something to do with the aforementioned formality of the way that the book is written. I think that often ages people a little bit. I do think something that really stands out about this book is just how subtle a lot of Boyer's writing is. Everything is as it is when you step into this world and it doesn't need to be over explained. The reader is trusted enough to infer and understand all they have to and what is explained to you is never overstated. I'm not just talking dystopian fiction here when I say that I do sometimes feel like authors have a need to spoon feed their reader. It's normal for an author to know way more about the world they've created than their reader does and it's clear that Boya knows just how much to give her readers. You know, you've got Cal hard defending the state and it's really hard to read. I don't know, just something about this book being 82 years old and it feeling like it could come out tomorrow with no changes really hit you in the gut. As we move towards the end, there's this one quote that really encompasses the dread that pervades this novel and I think that's the right way to close up the review. We've been moving towards ever stricter surveillance and it hasn't made us safer, as we hoped, but more fearful. This is an incredible novel that explores surveillance states in the most haunting way, and the fact that this was inspired by what Boya saw during her time in Nazi Germany is nothing to worry about. I'm absolutely sure. I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure the fact that I could see so much of what I see around me reflected in a book based on Nazi Germany, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure we don't have to worry about that at all, and I'm sure it's not going to play in my nightmares on repeat. I'm sure it's fine. I just... I um, Also, if you're interested in looking into historical queer figures, then Karen Boyer is someone for you to perhaps look into during the introduction of this book. There was a little bit going into that. And also, it is, I think, worth knowing when you listen to the way that she describes womanhood, motherhood, what it means to be a married couple between a man and a woman and all of that. It's very interesting when you are reading it through that lens, I think. But, uh, yeah, another short video. Why overstay my welcome it's also rather a short book and while I think I could go into a lot more depth about this I think it's one of those books that the correct thing to do is to perhaps read it for yourself if you are in any way interested in surveillance literature especially from this era then this is certainly something worth looking into so i hope you have a wonderful day a wonderful night a wonderful whenever you are watching this take care of yourselves right